Just take a minute here. I mean, uh, I, I think this is such a privilege. I'm, I'm glad I get a chance to do this with Bobby. This is my beloved wife, Bobby King, and she's... Some of you guys have seen me up here before, but, uh, but Bobby is very active in the children's ministry. She's very active in, you know, helping administrate and manage. She, she's doing all kinds of awesome things behind the scenes. I mean, she's got such a great administrative mind. I mean, like, I sometimes think we are absolutely polar opposites, and I'm so thankful. You know, I'm the, I'm the big visionary guy, you know, come on. And she's like, uh, no, we need to actually be practical and make this work. You know, and so, so like God really know, knew what I needed. And so I am very uh, thankful that we get to talk to you guys here a little bit uh, today to encourage you, to help us think about what it means to be the people of God, to, uh, you know, uh, continue to work on and build an amazing church. Yeah. I've said this before. I mean, I want this to be an amazing place for you, but like my 13 year old son, our 13 year old son is sitting over there. I want this to be the kind of church that he loves coming to. Yes. Not only that he encounters God, but he encounters amazing people that can speak, you know, encouraging things in his life. I, I want him to, I want him when he gets 18 to want to keep coming here. Yeah. You know, and so that's my dream to have a great place that my kids want to go to. And I think that's a dream for you too. So, so as we're getting back to church today, we're going to talk a little bit about some of those things. There's good things that God has for us. But Bobby, I know, you know, we're, we were talking about some things we wanted to share and talk a little bit about our story. And mm -hmm. Enough. Um, we've been married for 27 years. I, it's a long time to wow, yeah. put up with another person who's a dreamer. Um, yeah, right. <laughs> um, I, uh, we started out as youth pastors um, in some little Assembly of God churches and really just grew a heart for the people of God and just wanting to see kids and lives changed and how could we reach them, how could we reach our community. Um, we would actually go pick up all the kids and bring them to church and you know have youth group and we did have a spaghetti supper once and um, at, at that church actually, um, we were just starting out at, we were engaged and the church, you know, they loved us so much. They threw us an engagement party and it was so wonderful. Um, the cake said, congratulations, Bobby and DJ. Uh, yeah, I felt so seen, so, so, so loved there with that moment. You know, it was great. Uh, I'm sure it was a mistake, but they got my name right. Yeah, right. Um, so um, we have two kids. Um, God blessed us so much. Um, from the moment we got married, you know, I, I wanted to have children and, you know, I just I love the opportunity to pour out and just to help and, you know, just really, you know, have that opportunity to be a mom. Um, and I think a lot of uh, women want that and are, you know, have that dream and that hope. And we, we struggled in that area. Um, we found out I had endometriosis and you know, I just didn't get pregnant and I had a lot of procedures. I did fertility shots. I mean, everything physically, humanly possible that you could do, I did. Um, and also, you know, we prayed, we came to church and, and this body supported us and loved us and believed for us. And God, God showed up. Yeah. Um, I was actually in the process, you know, God is, he's so great. Um, I was in the process of switching to a different doctor. And at that time, I thought, you know, it's been a while, I'll take a pregnancy test, and it was positive. And I thought, what? There's no way, I'm not doing anything right now. I'm not doing any treatment. I'm not even seeing a doctor. You know, what in the world? How? And so I took another test and went to my doctor and, and sure enough, you know, God blessed us with a, a daughter, a, a child. She's 23 now. I know I, I don't look that old. I know. No, no. Sometimes people say, uh, your daughter is so, so lovely, JD. I'm like, thank you. That's my wife. Uh, and I'm actually older, just a little bit. Um, my birthday's in January and his is in October, so I am, you know, older and wiser. <laughs> so, so, so we were blessed. She kind of is, so sorry. We were blessed with Allison and, you know, um, as, you know, life goes on, you know, you think, you know, I, I really would love another, another child. And Allie was about 10 and we were, you know, going to the doctor and I, you know, wasn't 
feeling well and you know my endometriosis was coming back and um, it's scarring and it just grows inside places that it shouldn't be and so it was you know I just thought you know God I'm happy I'm blessed you know um, and Allie uh, kept praying and saying you know I want a, a brother um, well she wanted two brothers or a sister and so um, I was actually at the time going to the doctor and talking about um, having a hysterectomy and you know I, I was you know we were looking at foster care because we just still wanted the opportunity to pour into other people what God has so graciously given to us and so we every time would go to the doctor and Allie would say because um, she went with me everywhere you know I was gonna enjoy every moment and she's like is this where we go to find out about a brother or sister and I'd say no honey you know we're you know God's gonna provide a brother or sister for us in a different way you know, and try and, you know, speak hope and speak faith to her. And she just would continually ask. And so on my last appointment prior to my, it was my pre-op for my hysterectomy, uh, prior to that, I know, do you say that word in church? Is that okay? I've said, hysterectomy. I've said sure, it. Go I've for said it. it a lot. Well, you all know now. But James Coping said much worse. I mean. Um, <laughs> so anyway, we were at that pre-op appointment. And, you know, they said, have you taken a pregnancy test? And I said no. And at the time, you know, I had a large cyst that was actually, you know, you know, needed to come out. And so I said no. And so they said, well, you need to take one because before your surgery because they'll have you take one. And I was like, okay, you know, whatever, sure, whatever. Um, so I took one and it was positive. <laughs> and you know, I was like, you know, no way, you know. So I took another one and it was positive. Um, I called my doctor, you know, it was like late, almost five o'clock that night, and they said, come in, you know, we're gonna take a blood test, and we're gonna run it stat, you know, they were shocked too, could not believe. Um, and so she's like, yeah, you're pregnant. And so, you know, and that's Matthew, God gave us, you know, I call it my double portion. Right, yeah. Yeah, so we, we the doctors told us that we would never have any children, and we were blessed to have two. You know, but through all those trials and through all of those things, God was faithful and he gave us the grace to stand and even just the courage to stand. Sometimes you feel like, you know, I don't have anything left. You know, this is too much. And I, I remember saying that to God, you know, um, I said, God, this is too much. You know, I know Abraham was willing to sacrifice his son, but I'm not. And I was just that honest with God and that, that sincere. And I think God rewarded that honesty that he understood, you know, he understands when it's, when it's too much for us and he steps right. in and he, he, you know, God saved the day. And I, I love that song by Rita Springer, oh God of mine who saves the day. And I always look for God to step in and save the day. Yeah. Yeah, it's so good. It's so good. And I know both of us, you know, the uh, support we've had from, you know, from you people, guys. people we've gone to church with has, has been remarkable over the years. I'm so grateful to be a part of this body. I mean, we've been officially a part of it since 1998, going all the way back to the Smith and well, Revival I was era. A part but she was longer. part of it before. <laughs> yeah. Um, we also not only have. You know, two wonderful children. We have several adorable cats, which if you know me, I'm sure you know all about my um, beautiful ragdoll cats. Yeah, so if you see white hair on me every now and then, I try, it's really in, try, but it's it, I'm, I'm, I'm unsuccessful. But they're beautiful. Look them up, the beautiful blue eyes. They let you hold them like a baby. It's, they're incredible. Um, I, you know, my parents had cats growing up and I thought, I will never want a cat. You know, we do that. Um, and then, you know, we got a dog and had a dog and gosh, for 13 years we had Lucy. Um, and then we went to cats so much easier and I'm so much lazier now that I'm almost 50, I'm not gonna walk a dog. <laughs> uh, so, so in our lives, you know, even after having kids, we face struggles, you know, Matthew was born with a heart condition. Um, you know, and, and God walked us through that. You know, he was there, his grace, his power. Mm -hmm. And if he'll do it for us, who, you know, I believe probably, I feel like I'm one of the most unworthy people, then he'll do it for you. And he will be there and he will see you through. Yeah. 
And so a lot of times, you know, when some of those crises in life happen, you end up separating yourself. You pull back from the body. You pull back, you know, when there's problems, you know, because just, you know, you feel that, that shame and that unworthiness. And, you know, one thing I, I appreciate so much about God is he takes our mistakes and our shames and, he, and our shame and he gives it a purpose. It helps us to see how to help other people and how to be different and how to yeah. change and how to encourage and how to see those hurts in other people. And I know my dad always said, you know, have eyes to see, Bobby, see other people's hurts. Don't just see what's going on in your life, but look at other people and see what they need and try and be Jesus to them. You know, be his hands, be his feet. Mm, yeah, that's good. Okay. That's good. Well, you know, here we are. It's, it's back to church Sunday, if you didn't know. I mean, like you, you know, right? And I'm so, super you know. excited about food trucks. Yeah. If you know me, you know I love food. Food of all kinds. Yeah. Cupcakes, cookies, bring it on. Yeah. She obviously can handle food better than me, but... Uh, um, <laughs> Yeah, and Frank's over there making remarks. Now, hey, hey. So here we are. It's it's back to church Sunday, and uh, we were talking a little bit about it, you know. And, and uh, I was kind of struck by maybe a story, and it may be a question tied to the story. You guys know the story of Adam and Eve in the garden, and you know, and they they got themselves in a mess. Anybody here get in a mess? I mean, I have a few times in my life, but. Uh, um, they got in a mess, and, and God asked, you know, Adam and Eve a line. You can, you know, read about it in Genesis 3, 9, and this kind of informs what we're going to talk about today, but, but God asked, you know, in the English translation, it says, you know, where are you? It's like, well, you know, God, I mean, come on, you're super smart, you're omniscient, you can see everything. Obviously, you know where Adam is, and Adam and Eve are, are located, but the question wasn't really just about location. It was about kind of like, where are you at? What's going on in your life? Who are you, and do you still identify with me? In the Hebrew, there's a deeper thing going on there than just where are you. And so we want to talk a little bit here today, although I'm laughing, I, I thought we would have a lot less time. You know, so uh, <laughs> uh, the question I really want to ask and, and deal with, it, it's kind of rooted in the thing that God asked Adam, is, is, you know, who are you, and where do you belong? And whether you've been going here faithfully every week or whether this is the first time or whether you've been away, these are pivotal questions. Who am I? You know, where do I stand? Who's, what's my identity in Christ? Who, who am I? And then the other question is, you know, where do we belong? Where do we fit in? How do we find our place? And we've been talking a lot about that. And I know Bobby has got a real heart for, you know, seeing our church do so well with people creating an environment and a culture where people can find their place here in this body. And so we want to, we want to talk about these two things a little bit today, but let's start with this first question here that was alluded to by God. Uh, you, know, you know, who am I? And, and, and what this sort of suggests is I think we're all wrestling with our own identity or questions. I mean, Bob was just talking a little bit ago about, you know, Maybe I feel like I haven't done everything right, or I've, you know, I'm not the best person, or I've not made all the best choices, although she's made a lot of good choices, particularly the husband she picked out was really, really a great, great choice. Um, but you know, I know, I mean, uh, let's be honest here, there's some of you that maybe are more aligned, but there's, there's, there's those of you here today that you might feel like, I don't know if I fit in at that place. Man, I heard that pastor, that same pastor get there and talk about this powerful vision of you know, grab a hold of God, which I know is right, but I'm not sure I'm at that spot. I'm not sure I'm ready to go there. And, and, and you know, that, that's tough. You might feel like I'm not close to God, or I'm not connected to God, or I don't feel like I know who I am. I talked with a lady this week, uh, and she stopped by, and, you know, and she was just so, so hungry, but I just looked at her, and my heart just broke because she's sitting there telling me, you know, how maybe she's not worthy of this and that. And I just wanted to tell her, Jesus loves you so much. That, you know, that he's died to make a way for you. That, that, that he wants to give you a new identity, a new hope, a new direction. You know, and, and, you know, we've already talked about some of the issues, you know, we've struggled with. I mean, sometimes when you face adversity, you start asking questions. You know, whether it be the things we had with Matt when he was born with his heart. But uh, another area, and I'll let Bobby talk a little bit about this. You know, we, we, we've wrestled quite a bit over the last several years with our daughter, who's 23. 
she has autoimmune sickness, and it, it, it's, been, it's been challenging for us. I mean, I, would, I, could, I don't know if you feel this way, but it's the most difficult thing I've ever faced in my life. Yeah. And, uh, I know, think a lot of it was she had symptoms, but we couldn't really find the answer. Um, what she has is so rare that they don't even really have a treatment plan for it. And so, you know, doctors didn't know how to diagnose it and didn't know what they were seeing. And so finally, you know, we, we a lot of prayer, a lot of you guys prayed, and um, the body stood with us. And, you know, my parents, you know, ever faithful, taking care of me and my family. And um, we found a doctor at uh, Lori Children's Hospital in Chicago and took her there. And he knew right away, he said, I know what this is. Mm -hmm. And was able to help us get started with her treatment. But you know, all those things, you know, battling with insurance and battling, you know, just trying with her illness and she's sick and trying to figure out what it is. And she's trying to graduate high school. And um, we're spending more nights in the hospital than we were at home and just, you know, trying to balance having a, a younger brother for her and, you know, what, you know, we didn't want him to suffer, you know, and wanted him to get to do all the opportunities and right. things that he needed to do and that was right. Um, so God, you know, really, I mean, I feel like I've been absent probably for the last, I mean, I've been here, but for the last four years, just trying to battle through this with Allie and trying to help her. It's like six. Oh, gosh. Um, and she is, she is getting better. God has provided ways, um, you know, she actually is getting, um, they're called IVIG infusions. These infusions are 18, like $18,000 each. And, you know, in the natural, I was like, God, how are we gonna do this? You know, and God provided ways, um, you know, insurance didn't wanna cover it because, you know, there, this isn't a true, you know, you have to have a, a test group and do all these things and people have to show a positive response. You don't have a control group test. And, you know, so we were, um, you know, doing insurance appeals and all that stuff. And you know what? God provided, you know? God's, you know, JD's mom sent us money and got us started and then right. um, God provided and right. insurance has covered it. Um, you know, we haven't had to pay, I mean, we pay our, you know, whatever our out-of-pocket deductible is and we get that done real quick. Um, but they have covered everything and, and she's getting better, she's improving. Um, it's a process, you know, yeah. it takes a toll. Um, and so just even a lot of those things, so not necessarily anything that we did wrong or she did wrong, but just it does, it creates yeah. um, like, what are we doing? Are we in the right yeah. spot? Are yeah, we, who are we? What's you know, going on? Are we making you know? the right choices? You know, this is such a big thing, trying to walk it out and trying to figure out. Mm -hmm. But the whole time God was there and you know, he was guiding us. We would pray, God send us the right people, right. you know, put the right people in our past who can help and who can know what we need to do and know where we need to go and who we need to talk to, you know, and, and he would. And right. so even in those hard times, he was faithful, but you know, there was, there was disappointment, you know, and sometimes there was struggles in our relationship with Allie, you know, trying to, you know, when she's not feeling yeah. well and we're trying to push her, you know, I'm not yeah. a, I, yeah. I'm not a wait and see person. I'm like, come on, try, you can do it, you know? <laughs> Yeah, you know, I I, uh, I have to. I'll be the first to tell you. You know, I struggle because you know I've you know over the years I've seen God do these incredible things. You know, I've seen people that couldn't walk. You know, gain, regain their strength. I've I've seen people the ears that were clogged up that were able to hear. And it's like it's like, come on, God, this is my kid. You know, let's do this. And it you know and it wasn't quite working the way I imagined. You know, but. You know, sometimes we gotta, you know, understand that God doesn't always do everything the exact same way, and we gotta continue to have faith and trust in Him. But I'm gonna be honest with you here today, if I could be brutally honest, I never lost my faith in God, but it got really hard. I never lost my faith in His power to heal, but I'm telling you, there's certain moments I feel like, man, I'm just holding on to this just by the threads. I mean, there's just times I'm like, I'm almost hopeless, I'm not. You know, and so that's a little bit what we're talking about here. You know, you can lose your sense of identity. You can lose your grounding. You can lose something of who you are. I mean, I don't know if you want to comment on anything like that or, or, or not, but I mean, but, uh, you know. Uh, yeah, I think, too, you know, even just, you know, going through a struggle and not getting the help that you need. You know, I, I felt like, you know, God, I, you know, you gave us this child. You gave us our daughter. And, you know, you're, 
you need to, you know, come on, do something, step in, you know, fix it. Um, but I think there's power sometimes that we forget in walking through the struggle. When you just keep, keep going and keep your face towards the Lord and keep seeing Him, you know, and just keep moving, keep moving, keep trusting. And, and don't lose your faith, don't lose your heart. And I think that's, you know, that's what we did. And I think God really, he, he built a lot of character in us, a lot of stamina, and really gave me faith to believe for other people. Even when times are hard, even when it's not going your way, you know, it's gonna be okay. Um, they kind of tease me a lot about that at school. Be, you know, at the, I work at the academy, and then I, at the church, you know, if there's a problem, I always, it's gonna be okay. It's gonna be okay. And I started that to speak faith to myself that it is, it's going to be okay. Um, it may not turn out the, the way I want. It may not be happening the way I want, but that's okay. It's going to be okay. God's got this. He's got us. He's got me. He's got my daughter. You know, it's going to work out. Um, it may take longer <laughs> than I hoped. Um, you know, and that's one of the things our doctor said, you know, this, this was going to be a marathon, not a sprint. And, you know, I told God, I don't like to run. Yeah. I'm, I'm not good at it. The yeah. only time I run is to a donut. And I do love donuts. I don't know why. Yeah. I thought about it. I really thought, seriously, let's hang a donut on the treadmill, and I would probably walk on it to get to the donut. Wow. I actually, to be honest, I have walked on the treadmill while eating a BLT before. And it is not a good idea. I was losing stuff out of my sandwich and it would just fling off the bat. Um, and my cats, yeah. they try and get on the treadmill too. It's kind of fun. Yeah. Um, so. Yeah. You know, so I mean, you know, obviously we're a little bit talking about identity and maybe our own wrestling match, but, but you know, I think you probably deal with this too. I mean, it's easy to get discouraged. It's easy to be in the middle of disappointment. and. And, uh, you know, the devil likes to get involved with our lives, and that's the thing I want to say today. I mean, the devil wants to hurt you and hinder you. You know, and uh, I know we've lived that. I mean, the devil, you know, I put on this paper, the devil likes to dig in his claws and damage our lives, damage our faith, discourage us. And, you know, the Bible tells us this, your enemy, the devil. And by the way, that's the Lord saying, he's your enemy, not mine. You know, the devil is not on the same level as God. The devil's on our level. Yeah. Your enemy, the devil, is like a roaring lion sneaking around to find someone to attack. First Peter 5, 8. So, you know, as a result of what the devil's doing, and we, we, we wrestle with stuff. You know, we're talking about our wrestling match with our kid, but, you know, some of you, you got your own issues you're dealing with. But right now in our country, there's a lot of problems, and Bobby and I were talking about this. I mean, people have a lot of oppression. You know, the, the, the darkness and heaviness and and, you know, Bobby mentioned, you know, there's, there's sometimes not a logical reason. Some people are just like, you know, you shouldn't be this upset or bothered, but you just kind of are. Or you just feel a weight sometimes. You know, sometimes if I feel a weight and I, I'm not sure why, then I know I'm, you know, I'm like, no, nope, no, thank you, devil. <laughs> you know, I'm not going to receive that. I'm not going to carry that heaviness around. Um, the enemy will just try and kind of almost, it feels like he's just pressing his hand on you and just, you know, you're just not who you were before and so it's yeah. like you have to fight those things yeah yeah and if, if the devil is is sneaking around and he's looking for something then it would pay to mind that we should be prepared yeah. you know and be looking and watching for areas and places you know we have patterns um in our lives and uh, the devil knows that he's aware he watches and you know i my cat he's got this pattern he's a rescue cat you know, I justify another cat by, he's a rescue. Um, he was, though. I, and yeah, they so, use all kinds of stuff on me to get another cat. It's terrible. You do have to meet these cats. I would have brought one if I could have. We, we don't, number's not important, Kenda. Um, so, um, but my cat, um, every, you know, I'll go down, I feed him, I get my coffee, and I'm going back upstairs, and he will just almost knock me down to get to the landing 
um, before me because he will want to lay there and wants me to pet his belly. And so we have patterns like that. You know, when we come into obstacles or we face difficulties, we have patterns that we fall into. And so I like to look at my life and say, okay, you know, when I miss it, you know, because we all miss it at times, you know, what, what precipitated that fact? What was happening in my life? What was going on? What was my mindset, you know, before I missed it? And so the next time, I can do better. I can be a better mom. I can be a better wife. You know, I don't yell at JD maybe the next time he tracks stuff in on the carpet. I probably will, but, you know, I'll try not to. Um, but, you know, those types yeah. of things, you know, and, and they're bigger things in our lives. They're bigger obstacles and bigger hindrances that Satan tries to put there. Um, you know, I remember my dad always, you know, if, you're, if a flat tire will keep you out of church, you're always going to have a flat tire. But, you know, those type things do happen. And, you know, so we need to be wise to the enemy. And, and, you know, he is sneaky. And we need to be looking and kind of shoring up our lives and shoring up our families in areas. You know, and a lot of times for me, that means I've got to get into the Word. I've got to know what God says because the devil will twist things. And so you have to know the Word of God. And it's not just enough to get a shot in the arm on Sunday or Wednesday. You know, you've got to know what does God's Word say? Who does God's Word say you are? And what does God say about you? And what does God command you to do? And I, you know, I've read different versions of the Bible. I try and, um, you know, I've even just gone and read the things in red because, you know, if Jesus said that, then that's really important and I really should focus on that and try and do that. Um, you know, and I haven't gotten it all by any means, you know, I still feel like I fall short, yeah. but I feel like, you know, just getting into the Word and knowing it and, you know, listening even at night, you know, um, just trying to understand what God has to say, because there is, there's so much bitterness and anger in our world. Uh, people are just angry about everything. When I go into the grocery store, you know, you just look at people and their eyes are down, they don't have a smile. And I mean, I get it, milk costs what, $6? I mean, come on, um, there's a lot of cows around here, it shouldn't be that much. Um, but you know, it's just, there's a lot of heaviness and a lot of hurt and a lot of discouragement. And we can be that light and we can speak that hope, you know, and I'm always trying to smile at people's kids or comment, you know, oh, they're so cute, even if they're being so ornery, um, you know, yeah, yeah. and yeah. Yeah, I mean, pe people are going through a lot and feeling a lot and maybe some of you today are too. And obviously we don't want to continue. You know, we don't have to keep living under this attack of the enemy. I know one of the scriptures talks about how, you know, Satan would like to sift. He told this to Peter. He would like to sift you. And that's the goal. You know, Satan would like to pull you out of church. He'd like to pull you out of your relationships. He'd like to pull you out of hope and confidence in the goodness of the gospel. But he doesn't have to win. Even if he's attacking our nation, even if he's attacking, you know, our schools, our churches, whatever, he doesn't have to win. We can triumph. There's so many good things. We, you know, and, and uh, you know, Jesus, we know, is a solution. I mean, I know you already know that answer, but we want to apply the power and the beauty and the wonder of Jesus, his death and resurrection. You know, I love this passage from Ephesians 2, 17. It says, Jesus came to preach this sweet message of peace to you, the ones who are distant and those that are near. And, you know, some of you in this room are very near to Jesus and you really know his ways, but some of you are far. Listen, Revive Church, not everybody in this room is on the same level. Thank God for you guys that are soaring high. I want you to pray for me. <laughs> but there's not everybody here is, you know, just breaking, you know, heaven wide open and praying all the time. There's people struggling. And we want them to get help. We want them to be brought into the mercy and goodness of Jesus. You know, and, and the scripture is very clear. If you place your faith in Jesus, you know, you can do that today. Put, place your confidence in him. And if you do that, you're no longer an outsider. You're no longer far away. You're in the household of God. I like this passage here, Ephesians 2, uh, 2 19. So you are not foreigners or guests, but rather you are the children of the city of the holy ones with all the rights as family members of the household of God. And Bobby said this here. She said, we get to get our inheritance now. There are rights and privileges. 
Now today you may be saying, where's my rights and privileges? A part of it is stepping into your identity in Christ. Stepping into the reality of his shed blood and the victory that he wants to bring to begin to change and eradicate the darkness and turmoil. You have, the scripture says, as rights as family members. And we as a church, we as a body, we as a spiritual family have good things available to us. So Bobby, I don't know if you want to kind of, I know... Well, what's, also, what's the Bible saying about us? Also, with that, you know, God has given us grace. Um, and the Bible says it is a teaching grace. The grace will teach us, but we have to walk in it. You have to receive that grace, and you have to activate it in your life. And if you don't receive it and activate it, then it's not going to do everything that it could for you. Um, so um, a lot of the things, that too, that we want to talk about now is that grace and that identity that God has given us. And God has given us love, basically. I mean, it's a very basic thing, but so many people in life feel unloved. And they'll say that, and I've had kids say that to me. I feel like no one loves me. And you know, I'm like, why do you feel that way? And you know, sometimes they can't put into words or express it, but you know, that's one of the things that Satan will attack us with. And so we have to remember that God says, I have loved you with an everlasting love in Jeremiah 31, 3. So part of our identity is that we're loved. Right on. Um, I am never alone. In Deuteronomy 31, 8, the Lord himself goes before you and will be with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. And so when, when Satan hits you with those things where you feel alone, you know, it, counter that with scripture. I am never alone. My God is with me. Um, we have been redeemed. We are justified freely by his grace through the redemption that came by Jesus Christ. Romans 3, 24. Um, so, you know, yeah, we've, we've made mistakes and we've, we sin. Sometimes I sin daily. Um, you know, but God has redeemed that and God expects it. He's not expecting perfection. Um, my personality is I expect perfection for myself. I want to do and things. And sometimes some others too, but I. I do. I do. Um, you know, I want to do things right. <laughs> I, I don't have that problem. He doesn't. Um, I believe in grace abundantly. And that's what he says. There's grace for this. And there's not grace for the clothes on the floor and the mess of in, in your car. Um, you know, so it's true. It's bad. Um, I just can't even. Not always, not always. Yeah. Um, so we are not condemned. There is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus, Romans 8, 1. And a lot of times, even with that, with that personality defect I have where, you know, I want everything to be perfect, I also then will beat myself up pretty hard when it's not. Um, and that's probably one of the reasons I don't like getting up here, because I feel like the last time, which was a long time ago, um, that I spoke, you know, I didn't do as good as I wanted to. So I felt like, you know, I, I condemn myself about that a lot, you know, and felt like, you know, eh, this isn't for me. This isn't my gift. I shouldn't be doing that. There are other people who can do it better. So, um, you know, let them do it. And, you know, I feel like sometimes God says no, you know, not because... That's not true, because that all could be true. He, he didn't argue with me on those points. Um, but saying, no, I, I want you. You know, this is something I've asked you to do. This is something that I've commanded you. And, you know, you guys are saying that's right, but you know what? He commanded you to do it too. It's not just me. We're all supposed to share our testimony. And the Bible says that we overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. And so if you're not sharing your testimony, if you're not bringing hope and life to people around you, then you're not overcoming. It doesn't matter how hard you pray. It doesn't matter how high you raise your hands or how loud you sing. You know, the Bible is clear. That's how you overcome. And, and why? Why? Why would God use that? You know, I go through a lot of things like, you know, maybe it's because God started this whole thing with speaking. He spoke the world into existence. But also, you know, so he's redeeming, you know, that, that quality. But also, that brings community. He wants everyone to have the opportunity to know him and to see him 
and experience that wholeness. And there's so many people walking around with holes in their heart. And, and I get it, we're afraid to say anything. Sometimes I'm afraid um, because I don't know how it'll be received and what, what people will respond and if people will even want to hear what I have to say. Um, but I think if we just look at people and say, you know what, there's hope. You know, your life can be different. God can help. Yeah, yeah, right on. And you know, these, and there's so many more of these we could say, and uh, maybe I'll, I'll post these later on, but there's all these scriptures that, where the Lord is telling us who we are, you know, that, you know, that we're not a slave to sin, that we're a new creation, that we're free, that we're blessed. You say, I, do I, I don't know if I believe that. Well, you need to believe what the Word of God says about you. Right, and that's a lot of the Bible, God, you know, our faith, that we believe, you know, we yeah. believe and therefore we act on it. We step out because we believe what God said. Um, and sometimes even if kids get in trouble in the academy, I'll, I'll have them, you know, write a, write a little sheet for me of who God says you are. Um, you know, and I also want to talk about too, just a side note, um, self-talk, you know, when we, we say things about ourselves, you know, like I'm stupid, I can't do it. Um, I'm no good, you know, my apartment's crappy. Um, you know, a lot of those things just, you know, it's self-fulfilling because we're speaking that you're speaking that over yourself. You're speaking, you're putting your faith into that. And so we have to be cautious, you know, even of the words we say and, and even thoughts that come to our mind. You know, I, I went through a season in my life where, you know, I was like, I'm gonna, seriously, I'm gonna take every thought captive that comes into my mind. And so if a thought came and I thought, wait a minute, where did that come from? You know, that's not, that's not me. You know, that's not what God says about me. And sometimes I would audi audibly have to say, no, you know, I'm not gonna think that, I'm not gonna believe that, I'm not gonna act on that, I'm not gonna respond to that. Um, and just really put some effort into who we are and what we allow ourselves to think and do and say. Yeah, yeah, and, and so uh, there's so many good things here, but you know, we had two questions we're trying to wrestle with, and let's, let's flip over to the second one, who am I? And where do I belong? And I, I know this has been a, a something that's been uh, on her heart. It's on my heart too, but it, it's kind of what this Back to Church Sunday is about. Like, like, where do I belong? Where do I fit in? Is there a place for me? And the answer, of course, yes, there is. You say, I've made a lot of mistakes. Or I've done wrong things. There's still a place for you here. Yeah. We want you in this body. Yes. If you want Jesus, if you want to grow, if you want to change, then this is a place for you. You can find people to take to. care of you. And, and, you know, and, and, you know, we need to become and embrace this role of being part of the family of God. And I love the scripture here. This is Ephesians chapter 4, verse 15 and 16. You know, it talks about how the church is Jesus' body that's been formed in his image. And it's closely joined together and constantly connected as one. And every member of this body has been given divine gifts to contribute to the growth of all. And as these gifts operate effectively throughout the whole body, we are all built up and made perfect in love. Now, I don't know about you, but I wanna get built up. Do you wanna get built up? I do. People say, what's church for? What's a spiritual family for? Why would we come to church on Sunday? You know, why show up? Because there's a power when we gather. There's a strength, there's a life. There's a goodness we find out. See, sometimes we don't really discover our identity until we discover where we belong, who we're a part of. And I love this last part of the scripture. You know, it says we are built up and made perfect in love. You know, I, I want to be built up and I want to be made more perfect, more aligning with Jesus. And that's good. That's what, that's what a spiritual family does. But it's not hard, I mean, but it's kind of hard sometimes for us to do this right. Sometimes the bigger question is not who I am. The bigger question is where do I belong? We've got broken families. We've got divorces. We've got sometimes strains that show up in churches, unfortunately. It's not easy to hold things together. It's not always easy to stay married. Although it's kind of like if you just kind of keep going long enough, you eventually... You figure it out. You figure it out, I guess, <laughs> right? That's, that's advice I want to tell somebody who's been married less than 10 years. Like, keep going. It's going to get better. But we want to kind of, 
the last part we're going to be talking about here today is, and I know it's on her heart and it's on mine too, that, that we want to create a place that people can be a part of. That we want to work on you know, building community, building relationships, building a safe place for people to discover Jesus and grow in the things of God. And I think this is very important. You know, um, having a healthy you know, spiritual family doesn't just happen. It usually has to be intentional. People have to decide, I'm going to love somebody, I'm going to honor them, I'm going to help them. You know, believers, we need to do these things here. And, and you know, I know I want Bobby to kind of elaborate, elaborate on some of this a little bit more. But we need to be considerate and show value to people. You know, give people the benefit of the doubt. You know, honor them. You know, what, what do you, what do you want to add to that, Bobby? I mean. Um, you know, just part of being a Christian is learning to do relationships and to do relationships well. And sometimes that's not always easy. Um, you know, it's easy to get our feelings hurt, to get our toes stepped on, or maybe hear something somebody said and say, oh, that's kind of rude. <laughs> you know, why would they say that to me? And, you know, then we start to kind of rise up and um, we get our feelings hurt or we get offended. And um, in this world, I've really just seen so many people, you know, they, they take an offense and it costs them so much. Um, you know, we get offended because someone said something we didn't like, or uh, someone hurt our feelings, or someone did something we didn't like, or someone mistreated us. And you know, those things do happen. They do. And when they happen in your life, you have to say, God, I give this to you. Because he suffered so much more pain and hurt and mistreatment than we ever will. And the only worth I have is the worth of Jesus inside of me. So if someone offends me or says something mean, unless it's about my kids or my cat, then I might get mad. Um, but you know, I, I lay that down, and I lay that down at the feet of Jesus. This is not my offense. And if I carry offense, if I carry that around, you know, I feel like, you know, I'm, I'm hurting that other person, but really the only person I'm hurting is me. The only person that's getting harmed is me because offense causes you to, to step back, mm -hmm. to be quiet. You, you don't use your voice anymore. If you, if you notice uh, people around you, you'll notice that somebody will kind of stop showing up as much. They'll stop talking to you. Um, and mm -hmm. at times I will go up to people and say, hey, you know, are you okay? You know, did I say something? Did I do something? Um, you know, because my heart is never to offend anyone, but you know, it just happens. It's, right. it's being in this world and being different people. And so we've got to be careful that we don't assume people's motives right. for things they do, especially in the body of Christ. You know, we give people the benefit of the doubt and say, you know, I don't think they, they meant to hurt me. Um, I'm sure that, you know, maybe something else is going on in their life. Um, I don't know if, if you guys know, but I was a social worker prior to working at the church. And so I went out on, you know, child abuse and neglect checks and talked to abused children. Um, and sometimes people who have been hurt, they don't always respond the best. You know, they're very angry and uh, kids would call me names, you know. Um, you know, and I, I always thought in my head, what do they need from me? What do they need? What can I give them that they're not getting? You know, and so sometimes when people are angry or upset, you know, I will ask myself that, what do they need from me? Um, you know, because God has been so gracious to me, it's easy for me to be gracious to other people. God has forgiven me of so much that it's easy for me to forgive. It doesn't cost anything. It doesn't, I mean, maybe a little pride, but I really don't need to have that. Um, you know, so that's just one of the things, you know, that we, we need to know our own hearts and, and check our hearts. Um, you know, why, why did that make me feel that way? And what can I do to help that person? Yeah, I mean, uh, we've been talking a little bit about this. And I think, you know, there's always a trap, like the devil loves to use our offense or something. We see it, you know, in our culture, we see it in politics. Like, you know, the social media world is actually driven by making people offended to get clicks. And, and it's cool to be offended and, nowadays. You know, and uh, you can be, a, you know, a, 
whatever, you know, I, I better not comment too much, but people, people, you know, people are offended. It's like a commodification now, and I, everybody's so angry, and I mean... What does that word mean? Commodification? Yeah. You use people's anger to get people to buy stuff or get votes or... I always have to ask, like, what are you saying? She makes fun of my word usage. I use perfectly reasonable vernacular. Really, it's because he's from Arkansas, and so he's trying to cover that up. Like, I can, look, I can use big words. I, I can't believe you're going to make fun of my book learning. <laughs> but this, there's a whole lot more we could talk about, but, you know, we're talking about identity in association. We're talking about family. We're talking about who are you and where do you belong. And, and we want you to feel that sense of identity in Christ and we want you to belong well. And this, this issue about anger and offense, I think, is a big issue. Bobby was talking to me about it, and I kind of felt like that was a major thing we need to touch on quite a bit. There's a lot of stuff going on, but, but you know, I get it. Maybe something happened to you that wasn't ideal, or, or maybe someone disappointed you, but we have to learn to get beyond that and not hold everyone perpetually in, you know, in, in judgment or, or, you know, like, you know, we need to keep a, a short, you know, uh, list or a short, you know, we need, to, we need to forgive people quickly. There's some scriptures here I want to mention just briefly, uh, Psalm 37, 8. It says this here, stop being angry. Put aside rage and don't be upset. It leads to evil. This raging anger that people have contributes to evil. You, people say, well, I have a just cause to be angry. Well, maybe, maybe not. I mean, we don't need to feed into anger and, 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 and bitterness about other people. We're, we're, the, we're, we're the people that have the goodness and grace of Jesus. One other one here, Proverbs 19, verse 11. I like this one. It says, sensible people control their temper. They earn respect by overlooking wrongs. This is probably one I need on the dashboard of my car when I'm driving down the road occasionally. Well, if you wouldn't drive so fast, it probably wouldn't be a problem. Hey, listen, there's places to go, people to see. <laughs> and tickets to get. Which, by the way, did you pay that ticket? I haven't yet. Yeah, I got one for going five miles over just right here on the View High exit. The other, on the last day of the month, it's like, this isn't tied to you meeting your budget, is it now? Surely not. But again, the scripture says, you know, don't let your temper raise here, you know. So I'm applying it now to myself. Listen, I mean, you know, I, I get it. There's times maybe we need to make an action or, or maybe if you're responsible. But you know what? People are going to do dumb stuff. People are going to say dumb things. It's rarely ever really about you. It's usually about them being an idiot. Just let an idiot be an idiot. Just smile. Enjoy life. right into that. I couldn't resist. Okay. All right. I hear you. Have it. My maturity is showing. So, so, so we want to overlook the wrongs. And, uh, you know, obviously trying to not hold everybody's, you know, actions or mistakes or sins, if you will, perpetually against them is, is difficult. I and, mean, and have the same grace and mercy that you want God to have with you. You know, if somebody offends you, you don't need to tell everybody. You know, God's not going around spreading your sin and sharing it and, you know, giving it to all the people who can, you know, benefit from your shame. And so we need to not do that. You know, we need to protect our brothers. Love covers. Love protects. And so that's one of the things I really, you know, I just feel like we have such a a culture of offense that it, it is fun to talk about. And, you know, people say, if you don't have anything good to say, then don't say it. And some people say, well, I don't have anything to say then, you know? And unfortunately, that's true in our society now. Yeah. And, you know, it, growing up as a pastor's kid, you know, there were a lot of times where I felt, you know, gosh, I was wronged. You know, how, how, how could that happen to me? How could somebody do that to me? And my dad would say, you know what, Bobby? You've got to go say you're sorry. And I was like, what? You know, but it wasn't my fault. I didn't do it. 
And I think that's where I learned that love covers. And that person became more valuable to me than my pride, than my ego, than my feeling that, that I, I'm, I'm too good to apologize for something I didn't do. And I'm so glad that my parents taught me that, that it's more honorable to ask for forgiveness than to stand your ground and prove that you're right. Yeah. You know, because nobody wins when you stand your ground and, and prove that you're right. Yeah. And when you apologize and when you become the submissive person and say, you know what, I'm sorry, please forgive me, then God wins and his character wins. And, and that's what I want in my life. I want God to shine through me. And if that means, you know, taking it on the chin for something I didn't do so we can have peace in our body, so be it. Because that's what we do and that's who we are. We sacrifice. My, my role here is to serve you. And that's what a minister is. We're servants. And we're here to serve you and to help you and to equip you for every good work. And, you know, I've been reading a book called Hero Makers. And if you haven't read it, I encourage you to, because really that's the kind of culture I want to have here, where you make heroes out of other people and you empower them. And, you know, sometimes, I mean, I really like to, to help and do all the work, but I don't want the credit. I want the credit to go to someone else. I want them to be a hero, not me. I don't need the credit. I know who I am. I know what God's done for me, and that's all I need. And so, you know, think about in your life, who can you make a hero? How can you empower someone else to be all that God wants them to be and allow them to get the credit, to allow them to feel good about what's going on? Yeah, there's so many other things we could talk about. I mean, you know, uh, you know, there's the importance of forgiveness, importance of honoring other people. You know, we want to create a culture, like she said, of, of where we're actually building people up, helping people step into their destiny. I mean, people would love to have someone speak a word of life over them and, and call them to who they need to be. And, and that's know. another thing, edification. When you talk to other people, you know, if you speak who God sees them as to them, you know, then that's going to remove a lot of offense because instead of seeing who they're not, you're going to see who God called them to be and who God says they are. Um, you know, like in 2 Corinthians 5, 16, it says, from now on, regard no one from a worldly point of view, which is according to the flesh. But, you know, call out, even when I pray for my kids um, or when I'm, you know, when I'm talking to someone who maybe is not doing something that I want them to, you know, like I will say to JD, I know you didn't mean to leave your clothes all over the floor. You must have been really busy, um, you know, which he probably really meant to. Um, but, you know, calling that out, speaking, the, you know, having that faith that you know that they want, they want to do right, that you know they want to make the right choice, that I know you would never say anything hurtful to the policeman who pulled you over because you were speeding. No, I'm smarter than that, man. It makes it worse when you say... Things like, yes, sir, Mr. Officer of the Law, sir. <laughs> That's an old Pastor Steve line, but. So, you know, we're there. So on Back to Church Sunday, you know, it's just a great time to get back to the fundamentals, you know, back to who we are and where we belong. And we want to be reminded of who Jesus is to us and who we need to be for each other. And we want to take our time and focus on him this year and read our Bibles, um, you know, and, and make sure you're checking on kids in your life and making sure that they are plugging into God and getting what they need from the word. Um, you know, just like I, I said earlier, you know, we overcome by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony. And, you know, making sure that we're taking that opportunity to share our testimony and that we're not wasting God's grace that he has given on our lives by keeping it to ourselves 
you know, there's a purpose for what God has done for you. And it wasn't just to make you happy and feel good and comfortable. It's so you can help others, so you can share that grace so you can speak how good your God is. You know, when's the last time that you overflowed with how great your Jesus is to someone where you just couldn't stand being silent another minute? You had to share who God is and what God has done for you with someone else. And you know, really that's how I feel about God. I would be nowhere and have nothing without the Lord. And you know, I just am so thankful for all he's done for us and really, I'm so thankful for all of you, for this body. Um, you know, my kids are here and you guys have loved my kids. I trust you with my kids and, and that's my greatest treasure. And just understanding that, you know, we're all here and we're for each other and that we have faith and that God has empowered and equipped us to do a very great work in our community. And so I just ask, you know, this week as you go out, look around. Look around at the people that you see and take that opportunity and share about Jesus. Invite them here, ask them, come, come and meet my Jesus. Because he will change you and you'll never be the same. And he'll heal your hurting heart. And so I just encourage you yeah, yeah. to take those opportunities and not to neglect the people mm -hmm. in your life or the people yeah. that God puts in your path. You know, there's a reason, and yeah. there's a person waiting for you to share about Jesus. Yeah. There is an answer to who you are and where you belong. You, know, you are bought by the blood of Jesus Christ. You're a child of the Most High God with a future and with a promise. And you also belong to a family. And we have a hope. And we have a great hope I love in when the Jesus wonder says Jesus. that you have a hope and a future. Yeah. Right yeah. on, right on. So let's, let's make this a great season, even into the next year. God's gonna do great things through Revive Church. People's lives are gonna be changed, but I want you to be changed, and I believe you will be. This is gonna be great, and I'm so thankful that you joined us today for Back to Church Sunday.